Hey, this is Scott, and this is just going to be a short intro because today we are going to be talking about this little gem, the 1.4 extender from Fuji, and we're going to be putting it onto the Fuji 7300 lens. And basically, just goes on like that. It adds so little to the lens, but gives you so much. So let's go and look at those pictures. Okay, here we go. We are going to be looking at pictures from the Fuji 70-300 with the one4 times tele-extender. And the first picture we're looking at here is just a sign. And I'm going to take you from 420 millimeters, which is what it would be with the one4 extender on it, all the way down to, I believe, it's 98. And... Uh, this will give you a general idea of what it looks like from uh, focal length to focal length. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in so that we're looking at just this area uh, to give you a better idea. So there you are at 420. There you are at 279. You will notice up here where it says cursor control on our header. Um, that every now and then a little wheel will spin. Um, that's it updating. So if that wheel is spinning, that we're not at full resolution yet till it updates. Okay, so here we're at 279. Here we're at 192. You can see things haven't changed too much. We're at 137. And 98. So go back through here, 98, 137. 192, uh, 279, might be a little lost there. Again, little losses here and there we can't account too much for because it, it could just be variations. Every picture you see in this is me hand holding it. And here we are at 420. Now, definitely seems to be a little bit of loss at 420, but again, uh, we're looking at details here and it's not really, I think, uber significant. And so let me go ahead and then back out and we'll put these all next to each other. I'm going to try to go fairly fast because it's got a lot of pictures because I think seeing lots of pictures is important. Get these all about the same. So here now you have them all from 420 down to 98 millimeters. And you can definitely see that there seems to be a slight tendency to get a little softer as we get to those really extremes uh, in focal length. But for the most part, I don't think it's necessarily bad. Let's get this little national park symbol in there too. Um, so I don't think it would adversely affect most pictures. Okay, so that's it. So. Uh, now again, I've got some questions on birds in flight. I not consider myself to be an expert in birds in flight. Let me change my mic here a little bit. Um, but I did my best. <laughs> Over time, I'll get better. Um, personally, I don't think the camera itself, that this has nothing to do with a lens, but this is that the camera's um, autofocus to me does not lock on as well good as it needs to to really be an exceptional birds in flight but i don't think it's to the point that you can't make it work so with my limited skills in chasing birds in flight um here's seagull that one looks pretty good if i was just show you that you'd say oh it's great uh but let's look at some others again not so wonderful, not quite as sharp. These are at, uh, this is at one uh, 250 thousandth. Again, if you didn't see my previous videos, if you go down here, I'm using Capture One. You can see the ISO, you can see the speed, you can see the aperture, and you can see the focal length. Um, and the uh, Fuji does adjust it for what it is with the 1.4 attached. So, not great but not horrible 
another one not great didn't blow it up too much again they're still like a ways away uh, well, the closer the birds get it is harder to keep them framed if they're not at all hovering or whatever here we got an osprey and it's like yeah, it's okay uh, and this is a 279 uh, as far as focal length it's not all the way out but again gives you an idea and here's seagull and an osprey sharing the sky together I mean it, it doesn't look bad but it just you know this would be like typical just not really sharp back that out so again this is 1600th of a second not probably needed to be up higher but I'll let those who do birds in flight evaluate this for themselves. This is what I'd say is typical. This is a series of me trying to get a pelican as it's flying uh, towards me. And you're going to see that not in focus. Not in focus. It's not really grabbing it and catching it. And this one's okay. Uh, that one it caught. And... This one's okay, so it's not that you can't get results, but it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Okay, let's go to things that are just more general. Uh, I got out there very early in the morning just for you guys, uh, <laughs> before the sun actually started to rise. So when it started to rise, uh, I thought it looked pretty. Uh, this is at 98 millimeters, uh, 2,000 of a second, ISO 320, going right into the sun. Um, Kind of pretty pictures, nice orangey morning glow uh, to the light. And I suppose I should zoom in. But these are more, you know, pictures to be taken from, uh, looked at from afar. Okay, of course some of the birds were getting frisky in the morning. And again, this is at ISO 3200 uh, f8 because this is at 420 uh, two thousandth of a second so you know this is just the way it is it's a I wonder how we're gonna be if they up the resolution on these cameras whether 3200 is going to be usable this little bird and again i'm showing you pictures that aren't so good and pictures that are good so you kind of see a good mix to give you realistic expectations i'm not just going to show you my best work and say what a great lens i'm going to say this is what the average person can get okay here's another little guy again these are smaller birds uh, it hasn't updated yet. If you look at the top there, you would have seen that little rotating. Now it's updated. So not super crispy sharp, but that could be partly on me, partly on the lens. But as long as you keep it to, say, 67%, eh, that'd make a pretty good print once it updates. There we go. I could live with that. I mean, the focus is pretty much there it might have been a little bit forward because you can see the focus is from kind of here to like here so maybe it's a little bit front focused um, there here's another one again not as sharp as I would have liked it to be um, I think the focus is in the, the right spot but again ISO 3200 it's just pushing it, but if you're going to go to 420, you're going to be sitting there at F8, and you're going to be at ISO 3200 in, in the morning like this. Uh, so uh, that's one of the things I would say. I think this lens really likes light. <laughs> Obviously, all lenses like light, but I think when the uh, contrast goes down and stuff, the lens doesn't uh, look as nice as it does when it really has some solid light. Okay, and this guy, his color here kind of blended with the, with the light and uh, just kind of made it look a little, I mean, it's kind of in focus, but just kind of funky. 
But, like I said, showing you warts and all. There's another picture of him. It's not like the focus is that far off. Just It just didn't seem to come in sharp. I mean, the grasses look sharp. It is ISO 2000, and I think it's just kind of the way the the color of the light and the color of him kind of just made it not come up looking super sharp. Okay. Uh, <laughs> these kind of ducks I'm, I'm more familiar with uh, up north. And I didn't really expect them to see at the beach, but there was actually quite a few of them hanging out at the beach, uh, doing some uh, some winter vacationing, I guess. And again, this is kind of this funky early morning light. You can see it definitely very warm on there. Uh, kind of makes this color get a little funky. Uh, but still, interesting picture. Uh, this is just bird tracks. Um, but you can see in the sand and you can see the, the detail in there. And if you, I mean, even from side to side, once it updates there, uh, it seems to stay pretty solid. So uh, they were cleaning up the seaweed and stuff on the beach. These guys didn't seem to be uh, phased by it. I guess they're used to this little uh, morning procedure every morning. So this one was grooming and this one was kind of sleeping through the whole process. Again, ISO 2500 early in the morning. So not a whole lot of light. And this is at 420. Another little birdie. And again, not as sharp as I would have liked it, but take it back. Not a bad picture. All depends on how far you want to try to blow them up. And here's two gulls hanging out. Obviously, focus, it seems to be more on the back one, and it's pretty sharp. Good details on the feathers, no complaints. And just thought this was kind of funny with this one making a fuss, and this one just kind of staring at me like, what's wrong with him? And again, we're at ISO 1250. Again, a little noise and stuff in there, but yeah. APSC is what it is. And here we go, another. Not quite tack sharp, but not bad. Pretty good in the feathers. Again, ISO 1000. Sun's slowly coming up. This is 420. Uh, nice little picture. This is a sh was a shaded area. There was really no sun coming in here to speak of. So we're at ISO 3200, 2,000th of a second, 207 millimeters. But not bad. Oh, well, there is some noise and stuff in there. Uh, this one was kind of fun. This is at 98. So these guys out here uh, trying to meet out here. You can see uh, over here is a little broken up. And that's uh, the atmospheric conditions of such a long lens. It, like it's a little funky out there. And then here, I didn't move, uh, but taking it to 420 so you can see just how close uh, you can actually get. And these guys were pulling themselves together so they could uh, transfer some stuff to each other. And, oh, let me zoom in again. You can definitely see that atmospheric haze coming in, becoming a factor with a long lens like this. Uh, just nice little scenic sun on the water. And these little gulls I can get to. Uh, this guy had gotten himself a piece of dead fish, and this guy wanted a piece of it. And uh, not as sharp as I would have liked, but we're having a little tug of wars at different times. That little marlin or blackbird, whatever, sitting up here. He looks pretty good. Not perfect, but again, a little funky here. 
but depending on how you blow it up. Again, that's a 420, but he was a ways away. And here's a bunch of these onhingas, snake birds, water turkeys, whatever you want to call them, uh, all sunning themselves. So it was quite a collection of them uh, in the morning. And for the most part, it looks pretty good, even though it's at uh, ISO 1000. No major complaints there. And here's another little guy. Uh, I was. It was a little bit chilly this morning, and uh, it was pretty windy, and it was blowing up a lot of sea foam. Almost looks like snow drifts, except for the seaweed in there. And so this guy was bobbing in between the sea foam, trying to find things to nibble on. Another little sandpiper. And again, this is the shadow side, and again, it's an okay picture, but uh, when you get that sun, it just seems to really improve uh, pictures. So here's another one, and this one's on the sun side. Our 800 ISO, we're at 420, um, but looking pretty good. Update, pretty decent sharpness and everything. Uh, so not bad there. And another one, maybe even got it more on the focal Focus plane, uh, so that one's looking pretty good. And another one, oh, looking even better. You even can actually see some detail in the eyes and stuff there. I think I had to like enhance this. Um, that you can make adjustment layers. And uh, what I did is went in here and let me show you to you. Uh, I made a mask on the eye and I can make it you can make it so it only displays it while it's drawing and uh, you can see I gave it just a little bit to make his eye pop but you can do a lot of little quick fixes inside of Capture One so that's like a pretty neat thing to uh, uh, to know about I should probably do more on it for those people who are Big Adobe fans and have not moved to Capture One. Uh, Fuji Files really like Capture One, but I have been using it for years, ever since I used Canon. Uh, so here we have another Sandpiper. That is my cat, Isabella. She decided she wants to be part of this. Again, uh, ISO 1250, but we're on the dark side, so a lot more noise than I'd like to see. But uh, again, it's APS-C, so you can only get so much out of it. And then here's another little sandpiper in the sea foam. And another picture of him. And here's a mangrove. Nice. This is... Cat is in the way, uh, which you can't see. <laughs> 142 millimeters. Um, Went ahead and took a picture of it. I actually had an assignment once that all I did was just went around taking pictures of mangroves. Uh, nice details. You can see some oysters attaching down here in the roots. And it's a good picture, good detail. Uh, ISO 800, uh, good light. Uh, it's a big factor, I think. And just in case you into furry things, there happen to be some squirrels, nothing more exciting than that. Uh, but this guy did this like weird thing, like he was reaching out to me. But this is at 420 millimeters and uh, ISO 1250, um, but a good, again, good general diffused light, uh, 125th of a second and F8. Uh, let it update, and you can see pretty decently uh, sharp. You can also see some bokeh quality over here, so that's pretty good. And then here's him from the side, and there we go, it's updated, so looking nice and sharp, no complaints in there. 
And here I had an Osprey. This is at 420. He was still quite a ways away. I used to have 400. Um, okay, not as nice as I would have liked, but eh, it's okay. And here's when he was just getting ready to take off. So he looks far more noble there than he does there. There he kind of looks goofy with those big eyes. And there he is. And I have a spot on my sensor, which is what that is showing. And here's another guy. He's in good light now. Uh, he just landed in this tree. Uh, it looks good in general. Let's zoom in. His feathers look pretty decent. He looks pretty decent. Could probably sit there. This is... i give you a quick idea of this. I could go in here to this mask. I can create a layer and go into my masking tool. And I can just go over here and like draw a quick mask. Change the size of my tool, go out on his beak, and then I can go in here and just do some correction on his face to try to bring out some detail. So you can really just like do almost everything you need to do to photograph inside a Capture One without ever going to Photoshop. And this was a neat little crab. He was, I was like walking along in the water and he was like keeping pace with me. He'd like come over and check me out. It was pretty funny. Uh, and he's technically underwater and there's my ugly foot. Uh, and you can see him. He, he kind of is all covered with algae and had stuff on top of him. But still interesting. Uh, 98 millimeters, obviously close focusing. Uh, here we have another little hermit crab, I guess. He is underwater, um, but I shot through the water to him. ISO 1000, uh, one one thousandth of a second F8, and this is at 420 millimeters, but again, showing that close focusing macro capability. And we can even zoom in, you can see his, whatever these little things are, and all these little hairs down here, and his funky eyeballs, and little segmentation in his whiskers, antlers, I don't know what you call them on a little crab like that. And obviously the focus is here, not on the top of the shelf, because very limited to depth of field uh, in that kind of a macro shot. And a different squirrel. I updated, nice and sharp, so no complaints there. Uh, as I was pulling out my car, uh, this guy popped in, tried to get a picture of him. It's not uh, the best. Again, he's in shadow. Uh, this lens just seems to like a good amount of light to really get the best out of it. Even though this is ISO 800, um, it's just not as crisp as I would like it. And I pushed up clarity and, and have that normal 20 to the structure that I do because Fuji just seems to need that structure uh, to get its sharpness up to snuff. And here's one of these guys. The full frame. Looking pretty good. Details in his feathers. I guess this is ISO 200. So we're getting just about the best we can out of the camera. Uh, so no noise, decent sharpness, focus is in there, 420 F9, uh, so looking good. Uh, this one's kind of like a good postcardy image of Florida. And give this a second to update. There we go, so decently sharp. It's ISO 3200, he was in the shade. So it's the shade of the mangroves um, is where he was at. So limitations, and that's again F9, and this is at 215. But overall, a nice picture to hang on the wall. And there's another one. Again, same situation. He's kind of sitting in that shade. Give it a chance to update. 
and you know there's like ISO 3200 so we got some noise and stuff in here just not perfect not as clean as it might like to be but still an okay picture I would say you know 67 percent uh, enlargement would still look okay where are these on hingas uh, we have obviously painted these rocks for a while <laughs> and again they're drying themselves in between hunting for fishes uh, it's like okay and your blur in the background is some and here we have our typical pelican with two little uh, seagulls flanking him and he's looking pretty good and that's at 420 but at a extended uh, distance away from him obviously and ISO 640 he's got good sun got good sun good light get good pictures and here's a pair of guys one sitting one standing grooming um, I did do some adjustment layer here over here uh, it's in shadow and I did a quick just to pull up the shadow here because I didn't want to pull up the shadow everywhere so again at 420 ISO 800 looks pretty good now this guy he wasn't quite in focus versus this guy and here's the pair of them, but now this is backed off a little bit. And so we got a little bit better focus on him. And this guy is still grooming away. Got a little hook in his bill. And here's another pelican. I didn't notice this when I was taking his picture, but this poor guy has got fishing line all caught on him. Fishermen, if you're out there, take some greater caution. Cost these birds their lives sometimes. And it looks like it comes up here, so I hope someone finds them and helps them out. Uh, it was definitely a place I couldn't get any closer to him. He was behind a closed lock gate, so. But otherwise, the picture is nice and sharp. And again, I haven't really covered it, but some of you might want to do things like take pictures of boats going by. So I saw this rather very orangey boat, <laughs> and I figured I'd take a, a snap of it going by. And again, that's at 420. Lots of detail. You can read the type there well. Lots of light. It's a pretty good looking picture. Obviously, it's an intrepid. Uh, a little bit of a blue wing there. Not bad. And then as he passed me, we're now at 98 millimeters. And <laughs> at 98, I still couldn't fit this boat in the frame. Uh, but uh, well, his orange outboards there. Two guys sitting on the back, and this guy with his foot on the steering wheel. Uh, but looking pretty good. And there's that type. So if you're into that kind of picture, and you might have seen this boat before, now we can get a little closer at 420 millimeters. And it's looking good. It's got the solar panel there. So we need some. Uh, Scrapes and barnacles. The whole bird hanging on his little Boston whaler there. Oh, skip one. I just thought this was a neat little uh, boot hanging out on the side. A little worse for wear. But again, good light, get good details, good pictures. Lots of detail in there. And we 
again. Here's another one of these on Hingas. I should just call them snake birds. That's easier to say. And again, good sharpness. You know, I can even hear 200%. You know, there's, there's detail in there. Work with it. ISO 800, so it's not so bad. Uh, I don't personally find the Fuji uh, past 100%. You're really kind of pushing it. I think that's a kind of an X trans thing. Someday I'll get the perfect pelican diving into the water, but not there yet. <laughs> and here's a seagull hanging out on a thing. Pretty good sharpness, gives you a good idea. I didn't know these guys sound like this, so I took his picture. It's just to me, to me, it looks very funny. Because uh, he's kind of like op opened up his wings. He's like, hey, what do you want from me? Uh, but uh, yeah, he was he was sunning himself out here. And again, down here, everything's looking pretty good. It's ISO 1250, a little bit of noise, but all livable levels, I believe. And uh, his head's in the shade here, and I did do some adjustments. Let's go ahead and uh, go back here. And I made two adjustment layers. You can see I brought up a little there, and then I brought up a little on his lie here. Well, I'll turn him off, get in close, and you can see just a tiny bit of lightness there, and then brought out his eye a little bit more. So, more novelty, but he's interesting. Interesting pose. Another snake bird. Again, looking really, really good. Very dark in here. That would be a good one to mask off and uh, see if I can pull something up. In fact, let's go ahead and make a layer open up my mask you can see you can do this pretty quick i would do this with a little more care but to give you an idea and then i can go in here and pull up and see if i can oh, that's too much well i can go in there and then i can go here and I can go back in and feather this out so it doesn't look bad. Okay, so I got a little a few seconds of work and got a little more detail in there, but not too much. That would need some work if I truly wanted to uh, bring it up. But And another one on this dock and let it update there we go and see lots of detail as texture in whatever that part of him is and there probably use a little shadow recovery again probably again a mask here pull uh, just that out but overall just as it is it's a pretty good picture and there's 100% so no complaints there. And then uh, there was some work going on far away. So I went ahead and took a snapshot of that. I did bring in some shadow uh, at 420. Uh, you can see these guys up here working on this building. You can actually see the little caged work lights. Good detail in them. So just an idea of what things look from far away. And the closing shot, here's some building on the beach. This is at 279 millimeters. And here's a causeway and one of the little our shuttles that take people to the beach. And construction cranes here. And we can zoom in. Let's read some of the stuff that they 
got up there. You can definitely see, here's a good way to see it. Uh, in this window, you can see the distortion and that's from atmospheric distortion again. When you got a long lens like this, uh, you're gonna get some. So it's not that it's really losing detail in here, is that the atmospheric distortion is affecting it. But then we are 100% pixel peeping. And as soon as you take that out a little bit, you don't really notice. So there you go. That is some really basic pictures. Uh, when it comes to getting good pictures of nature and things like that, it's all about pers perseverance, a lot of perseverance and a little bit of luck uh, to get great images. Uh, but I think this kind of showed you um, the kind of things you could expect uh, from anyone at different skill levels. So for those people who wanted to know, I hope this was a good collection of pictures that gave you a good idea of what this 1.4 times extender looks on there. Um, maybe the two times would be okay, but a person, I think that's just pushing it uh, too far for this lens. I think this 1.4 uh, does a good job. And like we said, uh, that is, brings us to 420, which if we do that 1.5, we are talking uh, equivalent uh, full frame, a 630 millimeter uh, lens at uh, F8. So pretty good. Hope you liked it. I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, you can go back and look at these and you know just pause it uh, to to get some uh, to analyze them more if any particular picture was of interest to you. Um, and again, I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. It'll help me build the channel. Talk to you next time. Bye.